and all this factor will again become a part of the revenue the company is going to achieve in terms by the normal course of business measurement of the revenue how are you going to measure the revenue every time the sale of the goods is the top line for the company Good morning and welcome to the session 4 in unit 4 in IFRS where we are going to talk about the revenue that is under accounting standard 18. So now what is this revenue and how are we going to recognize this revenue? The Indian accounting standard 18 revenue recognition sets the guidelines as to when to recognize the revenue arising from certain types of transaction and accounting treatment of the same. So revenue is a very, very important concept. Why? Because that directly relates to the lifeline of the company. So we need to understand where does this revenue arise from? Not all kind of income can be classified towards revenue. At the same time, we cannot ignore it saying that this is not a part of it. So the accounting standard 18 lays down a clear cut principle which tells the company how to recognize the revenue part followed by it is recognized when it is probable that the future economic benefits will flow to the entity and this benefits are measurable reliably so which means to say that there is going to be an economic benefit to the organization in future so by investing in a particular product or in a service there is going to be a flow of money to the company so what the company is understanding here is that there is a future economic benefit a flow of money that is going to come in because of that particular activity that is done then we are going to recognize it as a part of the revenue cycle next the scope of the standard. The scope of the standard should be applied in accounting when the revenue arising from sale of goods. So typically sales, that is the first part of revenue. Rendering of services. If I am a service oriented company rather than a manufacturing company. So for all the services rendered, I will be getting my revenue followed by use of entity assets, yielding interest, loyalty and dividend. So by using those assets if I'm going to get interest if I'm going to get dividends or loyalties and all this factor will again become a part of the revenue so the first thing is that normally we will recognize revenue by sales followed by if you are a consulting services company for every consulting service that you have given to the client you will recognize and then you are going to look into your interest loyalty dividends and other part which is going to again generate revenue for you or amount to you now followed by the definition factor that we are going to talk income is the increase in economic benefits during the accounting period in the form of inflows or enhancement of the asset and decreases in liability that in result increases equity other than contributions from equity participants. So first let's try to understand the income factor here. Income is the increase in economic benefit in the accounting period. So definitely the money that comes to you, there's an increase in economic benefit. Where is the increase coming in from comparative to the previous year? There is a flow of money because of the sale of goods or because of the economic activity that you have done. If there is some money that is going to come to you, that is going to be an increase in income. That's how we are going to recognize it. And this is purely because of the business activity and not just only the equity and the sale of equity, followed by the revenue factor. Revenue is the income that arises in the normal course of ordinary business activity of the entity by a variety of different names it's going to be known by sales fees interest royalties and other factors so what is we are trying to say here in revenue is that 
This is what you are going to achieve. The company is going to achieve in terms by the normal course of business. So let us take a company like Hindustan Lever Limited. By the sale of the FMCG goods that they manufacture, the money that they are going to recognize typically by the sale of goods, that is directly going to be recorded as a revenue factor altogether. So it is very, very simple that it is being recognized as a part of the revenue cycle followed by the fair value. What does the fair value stand for? It is the amount for which an asset could be exchanged for the liability settled between the knowledgeable, now willing parties in the arm length transaction. So fair value is nothing but where the asset can be exchanged. So you are using the asset, that's a product or service that can be exchanged or the liability can be settled at the arm length distance. So you are going to assess the real value of the substance by exchanging it or by settling it for the liability. That is how you are going to decide the fair value of the product. Now, moving further, let's try to understand measurement of the revenue. How are you going to measure the revenue? Now, it is quite simple that many a times people will get worried about this factor that how are we going to measure the revenue? This is going to be measured at the fair value of consideration. So that is very, very important. Fair value of consideration received or receivable after deducting the trade discounts and the rebates. Now that is very, very important here. When the inflow of cash is deferred, the fair value can be less than the nominal amount of cash. That is very, very important here. Why? Because the nominal value of cash has to be decided. That has to be told very, very clearly. Now you are not going to measure the revenue you just like that. That cannot be done just by saying that, sir, I have incurred some income. Let me just measure it and let me just put it into the book of account saying that this is the fair value that has been recognized. No, you need to understand the fair value at the consideration received or receivable after deducting all the trade discounts and rebates. So after all the discounts, after all the rebates and all the factors that have been completed all together, then we are going to talk about the measurement of revenue. So in this sector, we also need to understand when the inflow of cash is deferred. Now, for example, the cash that has to come to you this month is deferred to the next month or probably to the next month again. The fair value can be on the nominal amount. That time I take it as a nominal or an example for a default value, I will take it and then I would start measuring up the revenue here. Now, the next thing is that under an effective financing transaction, now that is very, very important. The fair value of consideration is determined by the discounting of all future receipts that is being imputed as a rate of interest factor altogether. So when I'm going to say that under effective financing transaction, the fair value of consideration is determined. Is determined by what? By discounting all the future receipts. So whatever the future factors that is in terms of payments, whatever that you have to take care, all has been done at a particular rate of interest. So this rate at which we have to pay back all the factors, all the payables and all that, we have to subtract all that, then measure the fair value, consider the revenue at that juncture and then put it across. So that is how revenue is going to be recognized at any given point of time, followed by identification of transaction. So you have to identify the transaction here altogether. So only when you identify the transaction, then only we will be able to understand the revenue standards very, very clearly. Now the standard is usually or separately applied to each transaction, but to reflect the substance of the transaction. And that is very, very important. And it can be applied separately to the identifiable components of the single transaction. So now what I'm trying to say here is that the standard is usually or, you know, separately applied because this is in the normal course. This is separately applied to each transaction for every transaction. 
that the company makes we are going to apply it but to reflect in order to reflect in order to tell you the substance of the transaction the whole value of the transaction it can be applied separately to the identifiable to the areas where you think that the standard could be put in where the revenue matching could come in so we can separately put it off a single transaction factor also followed by for example when the product price includes substantial amount of subsequent servicing so for example now you have done the enough level the subsequent servicing that comes there that amount is deferred and recognized as revenue when the service is performed so once when the act is performed when the value has been recognized and it has been understood that this is going to be the final stand of that product or service that we have done then we are going to recognize this as a revenue factor and then the service is going to be performed on the other hand to understand the effect of series that is going to be there that commercial effect of the series of transaction the recognition criteria can be applied on two or more transaction at the same time so if there are multiple transactions on which you can be able to identify we can use it and we can you know try to find out the transaction value immediately so at that juncture at that point what i would like to say here is that you will be able to understand the effect of the series or the transaction value can be applied two or more times so you can use it at multiple levels and you can find out whether this transaction value works out that time are we able to recognize the value of the transaction now moving further the sale of goods now this is a very very simple and straightforward activity because every time the sale of the goods is the top line for the company so recognize the revenue from sale of goods when transfer of significant risk and rewards of ownership so i have transferred the goods from my hand to the hands of the buyer so first thing which i have done is i have completed the sales process next thing neither continuing managerial involvement or control now there is no in between control on the product on the process or on the service it has been completely transferred from the hands of the company to the other person that is to the buyer altogether followed by the probable future economic benefit so for example the benefit is going to be recognized in the next month next week or probably in the coming days i'm go i know that this is going to happen in the near future so the economic benefit is now realized by me i know that i'm going to recognize the revenue so let me do it right away next the reliable measurement of revenue so the reliable measurement of revenue is already into my hands and i have done it now the other thing is that the reliable measurement of cost so what is the reliable measurement of cost i have measured the cost i have measured the values and everything based on which i will be transferring it further so based on this i would be able to take it forward in terms of the cost factors in terms of the revenue so this is where i have reliably measured the cost and everything so now i am taking it forward so based on this factor in the sale of goods we are going to recognize the revenue pattern now moving further rendering of services now when i move towards consulting business or when i move towards a system which involves you know the services oriented so let's try to understand the first thing is that reliable measurement of revenue so i have properly recognized my revenue probable future economic benefits again after the consulting is over after the period of the service is over i know that money is going to come in so probable economic benefit i'm just forecasting i'm predicting here followed by reliable measurement stage by stage of completion so every stage of consulting companies will incur some revenue they will take some money so stage by stage measurement followed by reliable measurement of companies the completion of the companies why because that is also very very important at each and every stage you will be able to recognize the value and you will be able to tell exactly how much money is going to come in now let's say that you are going to look in for a consulting project which is going to span over one year in that one year you might be doing it and stage by stage part the first three months the next three months next another nine months so you will go through stage by stage and each and every stage 
you will be able to recognize the revenue and take it forward. So that is how the rendering of services will also be counted. Next one, interest royalty and dividend. To recognize the revenue related to interest royalties and dividend that is below mentioned, the probable economic benefits that we have to look into it as usual, we have to measure the probable economic benefits that are going to come out of it, followed by the reliable measurement. Whenever I stress on this word reliable measurement, I mean to say that very clearly that whatever has been measured has been done on a very, very transparent ethical basis. So I can trust upon the revenue factors that are going to come from here. With this, I come to the conclusion of this particular session. I hope and believe that this session was of a great help and resource to you. In the upcoming sessions, we will be talking more about the revenue factors. Until then, stay tuned, stay blessed and stay enlightened forever. Thank you once again for joining me today on this wonderful session.